Hi guys, it's Kai and welcome back to my channel. I wanted to do a dedicated video all about how I put on and secure my wigs. It's a little bit more complicated than it might sound. I've done videos about this topic in the past, maybe glossed over it a little bit in previous wig videos, but I thought it deserved its own separate video. At least that's how I justify these videos to myself when I'm doing them. <laughs> so this video is sponsored by Miss Coco Hair um, and they have provided us with the hair that I'm using for the wig. So I just sewed this up and colored it last night. This is straight 613 hair that I colored to this um, sort of cool toned light brown color. All right, so I've cut the lace down and we're just gonna set this wig aside. I'm gonna place it on this little head. I've installed an elastic band to the wig because that is also gonna help it stay secure to our head. You know, some wigs out there, and this is a little pet peeve of mine, some companies sell wigs and advertise them to be glueless which is really not a thing, it's just a marketing word. Glueless seems to mean that you don't wear glue with a wig. What it really means is that the wig just has clips or an elastic band in it to keep it snug on your head without glue, but um, I always put glue when I'm using my wigs, whether it is hairspray or Prose-Aid. So that's gonna be my first step. I take my Prose-Aid and I'm gonna put it all along my hairline. But before that, I'm taking this makeup wipe first and I'm just gonna remove the makeup that is along my hairline where I want to glue down the wig because um, first of all, it should help the glue adhere a little bit better if it's on clean skin. And second of all, there's no need for that makeup to be there. If anything, all that's gonna do is gunk up the lace of the wig. The length you go to to secure down your wig is really gonna depend on two factors, which is number one, how, what you're gonna be doing with the wig, how roughly you're gonna be whipping it around. And number two, how heavy the wig is. You're not gonna do the same steps to secure down a tiny little bus driver wig as you would with a heavy stacked ponytail. If I'm just in front of the camera and I'm not doing much, I can secure it down with some got to be glued hairspray and I'll spray this along my hairline. But for a performance, for something where I'm really whipping my hair, I like to use Prose-Aid. The great thing about this is I usually always already have this in my bag because I use this to block down my brow. So this is something I already carry around with myself. I take it on a little disposable popsicle stick because if you use your fingers or a metal spatula, it just gunks those up and it's hard to clean. So it's just easier to use this and then throw it out. So I'll take a little bit and I'll start putting it on the parts where I want to glue. Now you'll notice firsthand that my hairline that I'm going to glue the lace front on is much lower than where my real hairline is because if I glued my wig all the way up there, it would just look crazy. I'm also creating a more circular hairline because that will look a little bit more feminine than my uh, more square masculine one that has all these zigzags in it. So I'm just taking it past my sideburns right to about the side where my ear is. And you want to use enough that it looks white because it should go on white and then dry clear. See how it's already starting to dry clear here? Let me just put a little bit more on. What I will do, which is a little bit of overkill sometimes, is I'll combine this Prose-Aid method with a hairspray. So I'll do this. You have to hold it up really close to your face, otherwise you kind of spray everything and the people behind you. So hold it up really close and move your hairspray around because if it collects in one area, it's gonna drip down your face. Oof. Oof. All right, then I need my hair dryer and I'll put it on um, heat. If I'm really dancing, let's do another coat of hairspray, maybe even another coat of Prose-Aid. At this point, I'd say like 90% of the Prose-Aid has started to dry clear. And I can really feel it's being tacky. Like see how it's pulling at my finger? So let's put on the wig now. I've installed an elastic band to it to keep it snug. When you're sewing this on, you can sew on a really short one so that it's very tight and has a lot of pull on the elastic. But since this is human hair and I don't want to really ruin the wig and put too much stress on it, I'm not gonna make the elastic so tight because that is just gonna put too much stress on the wig cap. I'm holding it upside down so the lace is at the bottom and I'll put the elastic over my head. 
flip it up and the lace is still behind the hair. So then I will pull it forward. Make sure that the ear tabs are lined up. Then just pull it forward and sit it on top of the glue like that. So I started with the front and then I'm going to secure down the sides. Before I go in and really finesse it, let me actually brush lots of the hair back so it doesn't get caught up in this gluey mess. And then you want to press the lace down into the glue. Now the wig is on and it's been secured down in all the important anchor places at the sides and at the top. But the lace is still lifting up like that, which obviously we don't want. And we want the lace to sit down nicely. So what you can do is take either your prosade or your hairspray. I figure I use enough prosade to secure down the main portion of it. All I want to do now is just have the lace not lifting up. So I might as well just use hairspray for this part. Let's go back to my popsicle stick and just spray some hairspray on that. Like that. Okay. Don't shake it around, that is messy. <laughs> and then you can just really concentrate where that goes by laying it right there where the lace is ready to sit. I mean, you could also do this, but that's pretty messy and gets all in the hair. Then let me blast it with a little bit of cold air. Now I'm gonna melt that lace down and just watch. Right, so see how that lace is really melted down? And if I try to lift it up, it doesn't lift as much anymore. Though I can see it's lifting a little bit, so maybe I need to redo that just a little bit more. Put that right where the lace is lifting. Um, my lace is now all glued on and it's nicely dried. Now it left a little bit of a messy residue because there was lots of little baby hairs that were caught in the mess that are kind of scattered all over the place. So I can take a brush and very carefully brush the hair back to see what I've got going on. And if your wig is all styled and teased and coiffed nicely with hairspray, then maybe you're not running a brush through it. Sometimes if the lace is discolored or there's a little bump in it, you can see see how this is like way lighter than it used to be. I can fix that with some makeup. So I'm going to take a little bit of bronzer and just tap it on that spot. Right, so this is the point where we can touch up our makeup if it got a little bit messed up and all of that gluing and brushing and mess. See how that parting is a little bit funky? It's a little bit too yellow. A powder I really like for going over lace is the MAC Studio Fix Powder because it's so high coverage. This is NC35. You can go a little bit lighter than your real complexion if you're powdering in your scalp color. The reason why is because our scalps don't um, they're not exposed to the sunlight, so they are naturally lighter than our faces. So I can go in there with that color. Something you can also do, I like to take a little mascara, brow spatula, brow spatula, brow spoolie, and I'll coat it with some more hairspray. And I can use these to kind of guide the baby hairs where they might have gone astray and all of that laying down earlier. 
All right, we've laid down the lace now. I think it looks beautiful and natural, at least by my standards. Um, and partially that's due to having good quality lace, good quality frontal. That part is the process that takes me the longest. It's the part that I usually do at home. But um, another thing I will do is add bobby pins to the wig. And sometimes I'll do that when I get to the venue because sometimes when you add lots of bobby pins, it can become a real ache on your head. Bobby pins are gonna be, for me, my first line of defense when it comes to keeping my wig secured because I don't only wanna rely on the glue that's on my head. It's always gonna be better to rely on something that's mechanical, like a bobby pin, an elastic band that keeps it secure, versus a chemical like glue. Number one place I'm gonna put my bobby pins is in the back of my wig. See how if I flip my hair forward, the back of the wig is gonna slide back and expose all of your business. So what I do is I pull the wig back until it covers all of that. I'm gonna clip my hair up just so you guys can get a really good angle of this. I'm putting it all the way back down and I'm gonna pin into the wig cap of my wig and pin through that and pierce into the stocking cap that I'm wearing on my head. The nude one that I was wearing in the beginning of the video. And I reinforce that with a bobby pin that goes perpendicular to it. So I have one bobby pin going like that and another bobby pin going like that. So I'll do another one over here. Again, I'm gonna reinforce it with bobby pins going in a crisscross shape. So there's number one. I'm gonna do number two going, whoop, drop that one on the ground. And bobby pins have a smooth side and a bumpy side, right? The bumpy side always has to be facing your head. Though as I'm pulling it, I still feel like I can pull it a little bit more and I wanna put pins in it until I feel I really can't pull it at all. So I'm gonna do another pair. Really pierce it through. Sometimes it really is piercing into your head and you don't even realize until you take it out and you feel a huge sigh of relief. Even my elastic bands, there have been times where I've sewn my elastic bands on my wigs so tightly that it has just given me a migraine on stage and I just cannot wait to get it off. Drag is a lot of pain. I'm gonna put some more bobby pins up here. Because this is a human hair wig, there's a lot of lace on here. I can't bobby pin through the lace. Otherwise, I would like to put it at my ear tabs and right here behind my hairline. I would do that if the lace was shorter, but I can't do that. So I have to rely on where the tracks are. So I'm gonna kind of expose myself and show you where the tracks on this wig are. Like, do you see that black there? That black is the wig cap. So I'm gonna pierce into that guy. And you'll feel it when you're doing it, you might, you'll, you'll feel a little bit of the ripping of the fabric as your bobby pin is piercing through it. That's why I like to use the mesh wig caps now because they have the holes that I can pierce my pins through. So I'm gonna do another crisscross of the bobby pins right there. You'll feel the pressure on your head. You'll feel that tightness of the bobby pin. Let me put another one over here. So I can't see what I'm doing. I have to feel around for where the wefts are. And I'm feeling, I'm pointing at a piece of black right now, aren't I? That's the wig cap that I'm gonna pierce through. There's no point in pinning through hair, right? The hair is already sewn onto the wig cap. What you need to do is pierce through the wig cap and pierce that into the stocking cap that you're wearing on your head. All right, and then maybe one last one on this side. There we go. All right. Oof. All right, you guys, I think you get the point. Those three lines of defenses that I mainly rely on are the glue on the lace, the elastic that's in the back, which is installed in the wig, and the bobby pins that are all around the head. If you don't believe me, I can test it out just to make sure I can go ha, and then ha, and ha, and a ha, and a ha, and ha, and really try to oh, whip it off, but it's not budging. So I'd say that whole process takes me like 15, 20 minutes max. When it comes to undoing all of that, I know after a long night, the first thing you wanna do is just rip the wig off, but you have to take out the bobby pins one by one, which is usually easy done. You kind of just give yourself a little scalp massage and feel around for the bobby pins and take them out one by one. Um, and then when it comes to the glue 
along the lace. What I tend to do is take a makeup wipe, a makeup remover, maybe if I'm at home I'll use coconut oil, and sort of massage it in there. And all you have to do is find one spot that's starting to give, and then you can continue to massage around it until it lifts up the spots around it and beside it, and the whole thing slides right off. If you just take it and rip it off, then yeah, it might come off. Um, but it's gonna take some of your real hair with it if some of that is caught underneath the glue. And it's gonna hurt like a bitch, which you don't want, you know? Because it can also rip at the lace, which you don't want. The lace is the most expensive part of your wig. If you take it off and you find that there is some sort of residue on it, you want to take that off right away. I don't always do this, so please... <laughs> this is one of those do as I say, not as I do moments, which happens quite frequently on this channel. What can I say? The times that I have let the glue residue sit on my lace front after I've worn the wig um, and I come back the next day, 10 days later, 30 days later, I just instantly regret it and instantly hate my life because it, it gets so much harder to clean the glue off once it has dried and become all crusty. When you can clean it right after using it, that's the best time to do it because the glue is still a little bit tender. To clean the lace, you're going to want to use a paper towel or a makeup wipe and even a toothbrush and sort of scrub at it gently. And you can use some 99% alcohol and soak it in that for a little bit so that the glue does become a little bit more tender and can slide right off. You know, one of my teachers at school once told us that despite all of the theories, despite all of the models, despite all of the lectures that we attended, the real learning begins when you've lost a huge amount of money on an investment. The course was about finance, right? So, so is the case for wigs. I think the real learning starts after your wig has come off in the middle of a number, which has definitely happened to me. And I think I've come up with this routine now that really works for me and prevents those mishaps from happening. Anyway, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you guys liked it and that you learned something cool. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. But until I see you guys in my next video, I hope you're all doing well. Bye.